Ah. Are you okay? Oh man. Oh, you're not oh. dead. Ooh. I'm back, baby. Go. Oh. Hello, friends. My name is Akaki. How are you doing? How has your year been so far? This, this is my new gamepad controller for Smash Brothers on the Switch. Look, it's made of keyboard switches and they're all these clicky type. Oh, I would go so far as to say it's a pretty good controller. It sits right on your lap. So it's perfect in so far as to playing on a sofa is concerned. And most of all, it supports tilt commands. I'm sure you'll appreciate those if you know what those are. Oh, and it's much cheaper to make than a real Switch controller. Just recently, not so far in the past, I made this. It's a Switch Pro wireless controller with digital sticks for your Smash Bro needs. After having made this, I learned about this. It's a Smashbox controller. It's like a special high-end arcade-style controller for controlling Smash uh, for, you know, the professionals. And the cool thing about this is they actually add a shift sort of button. So you hold down this one with your pinky and then go left and right and that will make your character not run but walk. So it's like a modifier key. Well, that's exactly what I've discovered how to do here uh, with this button. So one of these buttons is a modifier, just like that. So you can hold down this button and go left and right, and instead of running, you'll actually walk. And the coolest part about that is I've implemented that with only passive components. So there's only, you know, four resistors in there, and that actually does all of that logic. I'll show you how later. In this video, I'll show you how to make one of these for very cheap. Uh, in fact, much cheaper than a real controller. This one or any layout you'd like. Perhaps you'd like uh, this sort of Smashbox design better. So this is not for me, but for my friend. And the layout is also of his design. So I asked him to come over and we had a few matches of Smash. So let's see how it went. You said you like to play with the keyboard, so here is a controller that is almost like a keyboard. <laughs> and why does it say subscribe here? Is no, this no. like a sh Let's see what we've got here. So this is uh, made to your descriptions, your yeah. specifications. You told me that you play fighting games with a keyboard with your right hand as the arrows. Yep, for maneuver and the left hand for the buttons attacks and stuff. All right, well, um, let's see who is better then. Let's see which controller is superior. My Bluetooth controller versus his keyboard style controller. Let's see who wins. Okay. Hey there, fat man. Let's go, let's go. Welcome to the bird dimension. Dead is my favorite character because he has his very strong but slow attacks. Yet, so... yet with this controller, I can do this. I do half tilt and make a strong attack. Tilt attack. It's different from this, which is a smash. Right. I built something cool into your controller as well. Check this shift button there in the middle of the arrows. If you push that down, you can do the same. So let's try normal attacks first. Okay, so That's this normal, is the normal yeah. punches. The same as doing this. Yeah. Tilt. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Yeah, you can do a kick. So on this character, they're all kicks, I believe. I'm practicing now. Okay, yeah. I can reliably... Okay, there you go. Oh no, he's learning. I need to stop this. Okay. Okay, Three, two, one, go. start. Oh. Oh. I can beat you in my dreams. Wait, that's not a comic at all. <laughs> it just means that <laughs> it's an impossible thing for me to do in reality. Uh, no. <laughs> what I mean, what I meant to say is I can... In a sleep? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can beat you in my sleep. <laughs> oh no. In your dreams, baby! Oh no, the rising tackle. Kickbacks, man. Yes! Strong attack. That's what this controller is made for. Strong attack! It makes the slower characters fast. Oh, yes. No. Strong. Oh! Smash. Not a strong attack at all. I can beat you in my dreams. No, 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 ah! no, no! no! Oh, I can speed you in my dreams. <laughs> Okay, let's call it the handicap. Yes, strong attack. There we go. Oh. oh. Right, I can do it with one life. I'm sure of it. Oh no. 
Oh, he's still alive. He's still flying. And you keep flying. And you and your go through attacks. It's the rising tackle, man. Ah, there we are. Oh. You're now in the air dimension. Yes! Oh no. Don't come here where the birds fly. This is my dimension. There we are. Oh no. Let me juggle you in. Oh, oh no! Yep. Well, I still have two more dumps. eggs in the nest. There we are. Ah, come on. Oh! Come on, let's jump together, man. Oh no. In there your, you go. In your dreams. Ah! Ah, ah, ah. Oh, that hurts. Whoa. Fly away! Bye, man. Is back. this the comeback victory? No. Let's go! Oh. Let's go! Uh, don't mind. Uh, one more time. Let's go! Oh no! We are. Oh no, he's in go now. Oh no! Pokemon go. Come here. Here is the bird dimension. Oh! Oh no! Oh, yes! Zap! <laughs> I thought I had it. I, you were down to one life when I, I still have three. Right. That was such a nice comeback too! Ah, I got cocky. Hmm, you got birdie. Any improvements you'd make to these controllers? I think mine is pretty much close to perfect. I think the layout is nice. Um, I feel yeah, it's comfortable. No, you, can, you can speak for yourself. I think no one else is gonna agree with you. The layout with, is amazing. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. It's very well thought out. I kind of feel like um, the controls are a bit different from what I'm used to. I think... Um, okay. what, what other excuses do you have? With Terry, you kind of want to put like you know the special commands like down forward, forward down. down oh, forward. he has those like uh, arcade half circle sort of thing. Exactly, which so you need to and like the are you okay thing. It's when when you play King of Fighters in the arcades, do you also find like a mirror world arcade no. where he has on the right side or? I've never played King of Fighters in the arcade. I always play it on the computer version. I like the touch with the AVX being orange, but wait, maybe you don't recognize what this is. The design. Oh, um, is this based on something again? Oh, yeah, this it looks is. So familiar. I oh, spent no. so much time and effort like de decorating this to look cool, uh, mainly for the video. But went <laughs> over my head. Like, yeah, I thought my custom controller with the micro switches was quite loud in the room. It's pretty clicky, but uh, it's no match to your keyboard. Yeah, I'm writing like uh, thesis here. <laughs> yeah, you sound like you're writing an angry complaint letter. Yeah, uh, the Nintendo. Fix the Terry commands. So the way this is made is it's just a plate with a lot of holes for your keyboard switches. So you can buy these mechanical keyboard switches. I used a glass bed on my printer for the first time. It can give you this shiny finish on the bottom, which is great. But it also can exaggerate dirt and imperfections. Unfortunately, my thumbs seem to have left some prints on there. Can you see? If you don't like my friend SS design, I'll upload the file for just one of these mounting holes. Lay one of these down in Fusion 360 and just copy it over and over, moving them around until you have the layout of buttons that you would like. Once that's done, just join them all together and add the plate to join them all into one big unit. I will upload this Smashbox-like design for you to use. So the next thing you do is you buy a cheap knockoff GameCube controller. 
take the skeleton out of that and rewire all the buttons to use these keyboard switches. You see how a gamepad knows that you're pushing a button is this black membrane just bridges electronically these two sides of this black circle here. But on most gamepads you can also see these gold bits, they're the test pads and by shorting them together you can achieve the same thing. Literally just bridge them with anything metal and you'll get a button press in your game. One side is almost always ground and it's common between all these buttons and the other side is unique to each button. And luckily they've even labeled those for us so you can see A, B and X and so on here. How these analog axes work is their potentiometers where you can take the central pin and connect it to either left or right side. One of which will be the ground and one of which will be the high voltage. Touch the center to one side and you'll get left and the other and you'll get right. First I found a ground pad here. I add solder to it and run leads from it to each of the different buttons grounds. They all should be common for the simple buttons. So here's a black wire for ground. I connect it to one of these two pins and then I jump that to each and every one so the ground is always common for each button and next I solder a single separate lead to each of the labeled button test pads so one for A one for B and so on and those are connected to the second leg of each keyboard switch The interesting part here is how I made these digital switches work as the originally analog stick. And perhaps the coolest thing, which is how I made the shift modifier. So how to do it? Here is how one analog axis works in a gamepad. It's a large potentiometer working as a voltage divider between ground and the high voltage. 3.3 volts in this case. So the wiper of the potentiometer, when it's in the middle, that's the signal arrow there. When it's in the middle, it's experiencing equal amounts of resistance towards both the low and the high voltage. So you get a voltage that's exactly halfway between high and low. When you deflect the joystick left or right, the wiper, that arrow, it goes left and right on the surface of that potentiometer so you get maybe 10% of the resistance on one side and 90 on the other so you get a voltage that's very close to the ground or very close to the high voltage and it's variable so to replicate this with switches the first thing i do is i replicate this potentiometer with two halves of just resistors or both of 5k and I add these switches in a circuit like this and the signal goes here if you imagine pushing on one of these buttons that would close that side of the circuit and if you draw a circuit of all the components that are basically left in the equation you'll get this and you can see that the signal is now grounded so the signal receives exactly zero volts which means full left deflection and the opposite would be true if you pushed on right it would be shorted it to the high voltage and finally here is how to implement the shift key it's going to be this red button here I extend the circuit down here, first adding those 500 ohm resistors to the original buttons and then two more resistors forming a second voltage divider down here of one kilo each. Basically the second smaller voltage divider is only activated when you push down on that shift key. 
and here is how it looks like when it's within the circuit. So imagine pushing on the left and the shift key at the same time. Only these resistors are left in the circuit. You can see on the left you have three and on the right you have two parallel resistors basically. And you can imagine that the left side has less resistance. If you calculate out the equivalent resistance, you'll see that the left side is slightly less, but not completely inexistent, which means that the signal pin is pulled selectively towards the left, let's say about to the 30% mark, depending slightly on the resistances. So this way, when and only when you push on the shift key, you'll get a slightly less drastic deflection on your stick. The reason I drew you a circuit diagram is because it's a bit hard to see when you actually put it all together. I didn't try and make it easy to understand or neat here. It's just some bare resistors uh, soldered down all according to the circuit diagram that I just showed you. For the C stick and the triggers, which are also analog, I just did the first part of the circuit with only full left and full right capabilities using the voltage divider with two large resistors. It's something you could very easily make with perhaps a small microcontroller like an Arduino in your project but I found a way to do it with just passive components, only resistors added onto your gamepad circuit board. So in fact, this can be done to any gamepad, not just the GameCube one. So how do you like it so far? Thank you so much for watching so far into the video. If you've enjoyed it, you should try and build one for yourself, uh, maybe with a different design mirror it at least so it's uh, right-handed and thank you for watching uh, until next time so long <laughs>